This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. President Trump becomes just the third president in U.S. history to face potential removal from office. But there are questions about whether his trial may be delayed. NBC's Tracy Potts has the details on the two historic votes on Capitol Hill last night. President Trump was impeached on abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi won't send those articles to the Senate. Not yet. Concerned Republicans won't run a fair trial. We'd like to see a fair process, but we'll see what they have and we'll be ready for whatever it is. Republican leader Mitch McConnell claims Democrats are afraid to pass on their, quote, shoddy work. It looks like the prosecutors are getting cold feet in front of the entire country and second guessing whether they even want to go to trial. Impeachment came after 10 hours of spirited debate. This is a political vendetta. The president is the smoking gun. You did it. You did it. Now prove it's wrong. You did it. Republicans united against impeachment with three, then two Democrats joining them. It doesn't really feel like we're being impeached. <laughs> President Trump at a campaign rally in Michigan aiming his ire squarely at House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Americans will show up by the tens of millions next year to vote Pelosi the hell out of office. The Senate now divided over whether to allow witnesses and new evidence. Senate aides think that may not happen until January. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. And while that trial is expected to begin next month, it's unlikely the Senate will convict the president, considering Republicans have the majority. A two-thirds vote is needed to remove him from office. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin is talking about President Trump's impeachment today, too. He says the president was impeached for, quote, made-up reasons and predicts he will be acquitted in the Senate. Putin calls the move a continuation of the Democrats' fight against President Trump since losing the 2016 presidential election. He also says he does not believe Russia's relationship with the U.S. will end. Impeachment will likely be the hot topic at the Democratic presidential debate tonight. Only seven Democrats qualify to take the stage this time. They are former Vice President Joe Biden, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, Senators Amy Klobuchar, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren, as well as entrepreneurs Tom Steyer and Andrew Yang. The debate starts at 5 p.m. at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. There were some concerns that labor disputes with a food workers union on site would shut down the event, but it's going on as planned. You can watch it on PBS or CNN. Back in our area, a follow up to a really awful story out of Beaverton that left a woman dead, three others hurt. A man named Salvador Martinez Romero is the suspect, police say. He's 20 years old. Police say he stabbed four people yesterday in a crime spree that spanned multiple areas. It started around 11 a.m. Police responded to a bank robbery in the Murray Hill Shopping Center. Two women were stabbed there. One of them died. Then police say Martinez Romero went to a Planet Fitness nearby and stabbed a man leaving the gym, then stole his car. He ditched the car in Tigard. And that's when police say he attacked a woman near Southwest Murray and Shoals Ferry Road and stole her car. He left that car near a Tigard gas station. Guy pulled up, jumped out of the vehicle and took off going around the uh, gas station here, picked up my cigarette <laughs> and dropped some money along the way. And then next thing I know, there's like 20 cops going up and down the road. Police eventually arrested him close by. Martinez Romero is facing charges of murder, attempted murder and robbery. He's expected to make an initial court appearance in Washington County at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And we're learning more about what happened the night a Vancouver teen was murdered. She went missing in June and her body was found in a wooded area near Clark County almost two weeks ago. Her suspected killer made his first appearance in court yesterday. Police say David Bogdanov strangled 17-year-old Nikki Kuhnhausen after she was told, or after she told him rather, that she was transgender. Police believe that followed some sort of sexual encounter. We found out through court documents that Bogdanov picked Nikki up after she messaged him on Snapchat. This is all really understandably tough for Nikki's family and friends. I had so much hope that she was going to come back. 
so upset. Uh, it's heartbreaking. The, pr the prosecutor's office is trying to determine whether Nikki's death was a hate crime. Friends and family are planning a vigil for Nikki tomorrow at 5 o'clock at the Vancouver United Church of Christ. And in Salem, police there need your help. They're investigating the death of a 40-year-old woman and are offering up a $2,500 reward for information leading to an arrest. Police say Jennifer Ann Black was killed at the Pine Street Pub back in August. She was one of two people shot. The other person was a 37-year-old man who survived. Officers still don't have any leads on a suspect. If you have any information, call the Salem Police Department. A heads up, if you're looking to rent a home, a lot of people are getting scammed out of their money. And to make things worse, they're being left without a place to live. The Better Business Bureau reports $37 million was lost to renter fraud just last year alone. Keith Pixley and his girlfriend say they fell for this kind of scam. They found a rental online that they loved, contacted the seller, paid thousands of dollars in security deposits and rent, just to find out the home wasn't really up for rent. The owner said he was in Nebraska or somewhere, and he was working and all that. Anyway, he would send the keys through the mail. He gave me a tracking number and all that, and then the tracking number just ended up disappearing. It, no package ever showed up. It said it was recalled back. I tried to call him, no answers, no nothing. Wow, so just so this doesn't happen to you, the Better Business Bureau says never wire money to someone that you haven't met in person and always get every deal that you make in writing. Okay, we are taking you outside now for a live look from our Pacific City Sky Cam. A dreary day out there today and more rain headed our way. Let's check in now with Rod Hill. And Rod, what are we looking at over the next few days? It's been raining pretty good, you know, this morning. I think uh, we are going to get at least a break in the intensity of the rain, if not a dry break altogether as we go through the afternoon. And then tonight there could be some breaks as well. You can see right now on radar there's a bit of a back edge in Newport. And there are signs that the rain later today into tonight maybe mainly to our north, uh, but I'm guessing here a little bit. At any rate, we've now picked up roughly three quarters of an inch of total rain here in downtown Portland since it started to fall yesterday afternoon, the beginning of our event. The uh, watch warning map still lit up with the winter storm warning above 4,500 feet up in the Cascades. The high wind warning for tonight and tomorrow morning at the coast where south winds may get as high as 60 mile per hour gusts. And then of course the green, the ongoing flood watch has been issued for the valley, actually the coast as well. Uh, through Sunday mornings. We continue just to watch how much rain we get or, or don't get. So my latest headlines, the valley rain total is still expected to be between two and three inches. Now we've already picked up about three quarters of an inch and then we could go, I think, over two as we go into the day on Saturday. Mountain rain amounts four to six inches. River flooding at this point is unlikely. Doesn't mean impossible, but we're looking favorable in that category. The main concern really is going to be localized high water, uh, water spots and some ponding on the area roadways. 34 degrees at government camp, kind of a slushy, wet mess up there. We're still expecting snow levels to remain above the Cascade Passes. We'll be up to about 50 this afternoon in Portland. More on your weather coming up shortly. Okay, thanks, Rod. A big step in the rebuilding of Lincoln High School in southwest Portland. Today, crews worked to remove all the athletic equipment from the field. The field will be the future site of the new Lincoln High School. During construction, students will still be able to play their outdoor sports using the field and equipment at nearby Wilson High. We're super excited to be working with Lincoln community. They've been amazing, um, super invested stakeholders, and uh, we're just thrilled to be on the way to providing a new school for the students. Construction crews are expected to be on site next Monday, and they're going to be installing fences. Then working on the new school will start soon after. What a difference just a few months make. We're talking about basketball and specifically the Trailblazers. Back in May, the Blazers were swept in the Western Conference Finals by the Golden State Warriors. You may remember that sad memory. Now the Warriors are the worst in the West and the Blazers are in ninth place. And last night, the game was closer than Rip City wanted it to be, but Dame had 31 points and a season high 13 assists. CJ McCollum dropped 30. Hassan Whiteside came through too. He had a season high of 23 rebounds. 
The Blazers were able to pull it away and win it 122 to 112. We are now 12 and 16 this season.